Alien and Quavo became the latest celebrities to endorse Kamala Harris as she looks to become the first female president of the United States. Excitement continues to build for her, with thousands of people filling the stadium in Atlanta to see her. She's hope, you know, and the enthusiasm that we feel, we it's, it's like 2008 all over again. 2008 for Uncle Bossy. I see it on TikTok, I see it on Instagram, I see my, my classmates post things, my friends post things. Kamala Harris told the crowd that her path to the White House runs through their state and that she was fighting for the future and for their freedoms. The freedom of a woman to make decisions about her own body and not have her government tell her what this crowd was incredibly energetic during Kamala Harris's speech, interrupting her several times to clap and chant. Her entry into the race has given Democrats here a newfound swagger. It seemed like the Peach State was out of reach with Joe Biden as the nominee, but they believe now it is back in play as long as black voters turn out to the polls. In the last election, President Joe Biden became the first Democrat to take the state since 1992. Still, he won by fewer than 12,000 votes, making Georgia the state with his narrowest margin of victory in 2020. On this beautiful sunny day here in Midtown Atlanta, people are out and about shopping and eating. And speaking to them, you know, there are some encouraging signs for Kamala Harris's campaign. But it's also clear that she has a lot of work to do with voters in order to secure a win in this state. Kenneth White says if Joe Biden stayed in the race, he planned to sit out the election. I probably wouldn't have voted at all. <laughs> yeah, but now that, you know, she's up and running, I'm going to get out and vote for sure. How energized are you now that she's in the race? Um, on a scale of 1 to 10, I would say a 9. Pretty energized. Yeah, pretty energized. Why? Yeah. Um, it's different. It's refreshing. It's something new for the country. It's something that we genuinely need. But Corvin Duckworth isn't as swayed. Uh, no, I haven't made up my mind yet. Um, right now, I don't really have a plan to vote. I feel like we've had people of my descent in office who haven't done much for us, even local and presidential level. Not really feeling like uh, politicians really have, you know, people's best interests. And Radhika Patel, an Indian woman who has a son of black and South Asian descent, just like Harris, isn't focused on her background, but rather her policies. I'm less concerned about if they are Indian, black, white, Chinese, Hispanic, Mexican, it doesn't matter. Their policy is kind of far left. It's um, in great opposition to what I believe just as my personal values and my personal morals. Um, I believe in male and female. I believe in a healthy economy. I believe in healthy family. And I just think that she is not in line. And in a sign that Republicans are taking notice of the shift in the race, the Trump Vans campaign just announced they will be holding a rally at the same venue on Saturday. That's the BBC's North America correspondent, Nada Tofik, in Georgia. The dare to dream. History to be made. The unstoppable team. Focus, achieving invincibility. The players who are made to wait. I can't believe this is never won a trophy before. I know. I know. The moments that seal their fate. This is a year out. They are relegated. The sides who give you every reason. Celtic champions. To follow every moment across the season. Rangers win the League Cup. Sydney United are back in the big time. Scottish football lives here. So football talking points, plenty of that. A quick prediction from you. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Unmissable action. Shanklin's in, he scores! BBC Radio Scotland. Now, Olympic Games organisers have apologised after causing anger at the opening ceremony. A banquet sequence featuring drag artists in particular came in for criticism from Christian groups who felt it parodied Leonardo da Vinci's painting The Last Supper. Now, one of those who took part is fighting back with a complaint of her own. Barbara Butch said her appearance in the scene had prompted a torrent of online abuse, including threats of violence, as Isl Isabella Jewell reports. It may have been just one element of the mammoth opening ceremony, but it's the most talked about. 
As dancers, models and drag queens strutted their stuff over the Seine in a sequence celebrating festivity, the French DJ Barbara Butch performed a set wearing a silver headdress and a sparkling blue outfit. All this before a semi-naked blue man was lowered onto the catwalk on a silver platter. Now, though, the performer says she's been the target of cyber harassment of an increasingly extreme nature and has filed several legal complaints. A lawyer for Ms. Butch says she's been threatened with death, torture and rape and has also been the target of numerous anti-Semitic, homophobic, sexist and grossophobic insults. Grossophobie is a French term which means discrimination against people who are obese. Barbara Butch describes herself as a love activist. Last year, she told Attitude magazine, quote, I'm a fat Jewish queer lesbian, and I'm really proud of all my identities, because they make me what I am now as a human. In a defiant post on Instagram, the French DJ at the centre of this latest storm said she was extremely honoured to perform in the ceremony. She added, whatever some may say, I exist. I've never been ashamed of who I am and I take responsibility for everything, including my artistic choices. All my life, I've refused to be a victim. I won't shut up. That's Isabel uh, Jewell reporting from France on some controversy there over the Olympic opening ceremony. Now, we are here until 1.30, and after us on the afternoon show today, Michelle McManus is joined by Bell and Sebastian Stuart Murdoch and Richard Colburn ahead of their two-day event in Glasgow this weekend. Emma McLeod, gold medal winner from last year's Royal National Mod, is heading to America for the Mod Chesapeake in Maryland. And closer to home, Man Rand's Kim Carney tells all about the open Mod Fringe. Plus, they'll have a review of the family films you can watch this summer, and they'll be shining a light on postie Declan Friel, who photographs the sights and scenery on his rounds in the West Highlands. And the monthly mixtape this time is Paparazzi by Lady Gaga. The time now is half past 12. On digital radio. FM. Your smart speaker. And on BBC Sounds. BBC Radio Scotland. Well, it's time for news and sport from the borders with David Knox. Good afternoon. Police have named the three victims of Sunday's motorbike crash near the Carter Bar. 29-year-old Andrew Larte and his pillion passenger and girlfriend, 23-year-old Georgia Tate, who were both from Newcastle, were killed in the crash. Their Kawasaki collided with a Suzuki, which was being ridden by 37-year-old Jason Gibbon from Northumberland, who also died at the scene. Investigating officers are still appealing for anyone who was on the A6088 at around 2.30pm on Sunday. Sunday with dash cam footage to contact them. Health bosses in the borders are progressing plans to withdraw dozens of drugs currently being prescribed by local GPs and pharmacists. Penny McMillan reports. One of NHS borders' most pressing cost pressures has come from a huge increase in the annual bill for prescribed drugs. Part of its savings plan is to trim away many of the expensive medications and treatments which have little evidence of working or have more cost-effective alternatives. Following lengthy consultations with prescribing groups, clinical directors, pharmacists and GP groups, three lists have been drawn up. Drugs which are not to be prescribed anymore include certain treatments for arthritis, acne and eye complaints, as well as an opioid painkiller, homeopathy medicines and sedatives for people afraid of flying. A further list for GPs and pharmacists to consider de-prescribing or finding more cost-effective alternatives for include post-surgery treatments for nerve pain, medication for an irregular heartbeat and other opioid painkillers. And the third list of medications such as dry skin conditioners and multivitamins should now be purchased by the patient rather than being prescribed. NHS Borders believes withdrawing the drugs could save up to £400,000 per year. Its board members will be asked to approve the plans tomorrow. Representatives from Eyemouth, Galashiels, Jedburgh and Hoyk were in Gretna yesterday for the first Borderlands Inclusive Growth Deal Conference. A £50 million pot of funding is being provided for 22 towns across Cumbria, Northumberland, Dumfries and Galloway and the Scottish Borders. And yesterday's conference allowed community leaders to share ideas and 
and how the cash could be spent in their own towns. Keith Johnson is chair of the Hoyk town team. Quite gratifying to see that the, the places that were a wee bit further on than us, they've actually it's come to fruition and they're actually starting to get projects underway. The experience that they have had is very, very similar to ours. Although the towns are very different and their needs are very different, but the experience is so similar and the same pitfalls and the same solutions, but it's, it's nice to know we're not alone. New varieties of seeds and plants are being grown in the borders in an effort to create plants and vegetables that are best suited to the region's climate and can provide the source of healthy, affordable food for local people. Karen Birch is Chief Officer of Abundant Borders, which launched in 2016 to help people grow food sustainably and cook healthily. They now have gardens in Ayton, Kelso, Duns, Eyemouth and Hoyk and recently opened in Tweed Bank where the seed trials are exciting. Karen? Really excited because it's all part of the food sovereignty chain. We talk a lot about food security and global supply chains for food but we talk much less about uh, the supply chain for seeds. A lot of the seeds that are coming into the UK at the moment, the sort of commercial varieties, are actually from plants that are bred in southern Europe. So as the climate change in southern Europe, those plants are going to be more adapted to those conditions than they are adapted to the conditions in the Scottish borders. So it makes far more sense for us to be looking at how we breed resilient species that are suitable for the conditions we have here in Scottish borders, rather than importing seeds that have been uh, developed in uh, southern Europe. Turn the sport now in football. Berwick Rangers missed out on the chance to progress in the SPFL trophy last night, going down 3-2 at home to St. Mirren B in the first round. After losing three goals to defensive errors in the first 15 minutes, they fought back against the Premiership youngsters. And over at the Olympics, former Jedburgh Grammar School pupil Lucy Hope is back in the pool tomorrow for the heats of the 4x200 metres relay. The 27-year-old helped Team GB finish 7th in the 4x100 metres final at the weekend in her second Olympic Games. And catching up before she flies to Paris today, we asked Lucy's mum, Katrina, when she first thought her daughter had real talent. Very early age. Yeah, I would say when she first started competing, maybe 8-9. She always said I would like to go to the Olympics one day, Mum. And I remember there being at Eyemouth and she won some gold medals and thinking, oh, I would, I would like to go to the Olympics. And I'll never forget Jim Curry who was coaching with us one night and I remember him saying to me, she's going to be at the Olympics. And I said, oh, do you think so, do you think so? But yeah, <laughs> she did, so. I never doubt the coach. Now for the Borders weather with all the details. Here's Gillian Smart. Hello there. This afternoon will bring plenty of sunshine, just some patchy cloud at times. It'll be dry and warm with light, variable winds and highs 19 to 22 Celsius. Tonight there'll be clear spells, but patchy cloud will develop, bringing the chance of showery outbreaks overnight. Lows of 10 to 13 Celsius. And then tomorrow morning will be cloudy with a few showers moving in from the southwest. In the afternoon, sunny spells will develop, but there will be the risk of a few potentially heavy showers. BBC Radio Scotland weather for the borders. I'll be back with more news and sport for the borders at half past four. On digital radio. FM. Your smart speaker. And on BBC Sounds. BBC Radio Scotland. Now, the former BBC News presenter Hugh Edwards has pleaded guilty to three charges of possessing indecent images of children. He admitted the offences at a brief hearing at Westminster Magistrates Court in London. Well, Tristan Kirk is court's correspondent at the Evening Standard and was in court. Tristan, thanks for joining us. So what has Hugh Edwards pleaded guilty to? Well, as you say, he's pleaded guilty to three charges of uh, making indecent images of children. Uh, it relates to 41 different uh, images and videos that were found on his phone within a WhatsApp chat that he'd been having with another man in 2020 and 2021. So what was said in court today? Well, these these charges, uh, we knew the the high level that he was charged with uh, these three offences of making indecent images of children, but the detail was spelled out in court today. As I say, it was it was a WhatsApp chat in 2020, 2021 with another man who was sending 
uh, Hugh Edwards' uh, uh, legal pornography, 377 images in total. But within the legal pornography, there were 41 different illegal uh, images involving children and, and some of the, the children involved were actually very young indeed, uh, between seven and nine years old. Uh, so Hugh Edwards appeared in the dock and pleaded guilty and then some of the detail of those offences were outlined in public.